But you may also know that in the context of Africa, indeed, UNHCR worked a lot with the AU and uh, other stakeholders on the continent to come about, uh, to bring about the so-called Kampala Convention, which was adopted in October 2009 in Kampala, Uganda, and which is uh, so far the single existing binding instrument uh, on internally displaced person. And this uh, document uh, luckily has come into force uh, as of uh, December 2012. Nigeria has ratified the document uh, in question and Nigeria, we are actively working with Nigeria, including with the National Assembly and uh, a number of uh, other stakeholders to see that this instrument that has been ratified by Nigeria uh, since May 2012 would be domesticated so that it can become implementable in the uh, context of Nigeria. So a lot is being done. We are also working with um, uh, stakeholders to see that a bill, a national bill on internal displacement would be enacted. There are drafts that exist and there is also a draft policy on internal displacement which my office has also helped drafting. We are uh, permanently on discussion with the stakeholders to see that these documents are enacted or uh, endorsed so that they can become the national framework in terms of uh, uh, dealing with catering for the needs of the internally displaced persons in Nigeria. What kind of signal are you getting from them while you're discussing with them to the extent that uh, we'll proffer or at least come up with solutions to ending this crisis? Very enthusiastic um, what reactions, definitely. You may know that uh, since October last year, there is a committee on internally displaced uh, persons, which exist, internally displaced persons and refugees and other persons of uh, concern to UNHCR, which exist at the level of the House of Representatives uh, in the National Assembly. And that committee was actually uh, prominent to exist thanks to the advocacy of UNHCR. And that committee is very busy now uh, working on the actual domestication of the Kampala Convention. My meeting with the chairman of that committee, uh, Honorable uh, Sunny Zoro, is dating just yesterday, yesterday afternoon. He was in my office and we were discussing about the process to uh, bring about the domestication, uh, uh, starting with public hearings and so on and so forth. So a lot is being done and I should say that really I commend the efforts of uh, the Nigerian government in tackling the issues of displacement. Although the magnitude is enormous and that's why I believe there is need for um, support from all the international stakeholders, including the UN agencies and uh, the international NGOs, which are also uh, busy bringing about such support. Do you see uh, synergy and improvement on the part of the response agencies, right from the states to the National Assembly up until the federal government level, to show that we pull together in solving this? You know, it's always difficult to uh, synergize so many uh, efforts at the same time. But yes, there is uh, consciousness about the need for synergy. And so uh, the stakeholders are working towards that. Um, it is always uh, difficult from the onset of a crisis to align all the supports, all the efforts in order to bring about a very well coordinated uh, response or a very well uh, uh, planned process. But uh, it is coming along. We, I think from 2012 uh, when I arrived to date, I can see quite a, a significant difference. There are structures to coordinate uh, the, uh, the various intervention in various sectors. Uh, in the UN we have, uh, and the humanitarian community, we have organized ourselves uh, through a humanitarian 
country team which exists and meets every, every month. We have uh, sectors that have been activated. Some of them uh, actually since uh, the, the end of 2012. And we are all working uh, in, uh, yes, in synergies, I, I should say, with the government because uh, all these uh, sectors are collated by uh, government uh, uh, entities or institutions. And so, yes, there is a lot being done in order to bring about a more orderly uh, support and uh, response to the issue of uh, internal displacement in any Nigeria. Special, any special case for the women and children in uh, such camps? Women and children, we should say, yes, they have been, unfortunately, uh, they have borne the, the brunt of the insurgency specifically. It is no secret to anybody that abductions, uh, slavery, uh, including sex slavery, has been rampaging in the uh, crisis situation in the Northeast. And so the uh, first victims for same are, unfortunately, women and children. Uh, that's also why we have specific programs targeting them, is be them uh, uh, psychosocial support or even my agency specifically is targeting vulnerability and vulnerability is definitely includes the women, especially heads of households and children who, who are separated or uh, unaccompanied. And um, we are targeting most of our assistance to these uh, uh, vulnerable groups, the elderly also. And, but uh, what is really to be said is that the, uh, the women and the children suffer just too much in any given crisis situation. And that's also why it is important to involve the women especially in the decision-making processes. As we are talking of responding to the crisis, finding lasting solutions, it is very important to involve those people who suffer most into these decisions because they are the ones who know best what they have gone through and what might be the remedies to uh, prevent or to preempt, to preempt other situations from uh, developing. Okay, so I'm just wondering, do you relate with others, um, a other offices of your agency just outside uh, neighboring countries in, uh, you know, bordering Nigeria. For instance, in Cameroon, we understand that there are Nigerian refugees there. Uh, do you also have refugees from other countries in Nigeria as a result of the crisis in the Northeast? No, I don't have, uh, not that I'm aware of, not as a result of the Northeast situation, but definitely we have a small caseload of refugees who have come from elsewhere. Uh, we used to have actually some from Cameroon, but it was not due to the situation in the, the northern part of Cameroon. It was due to chieftaincies, uh, tussles in uh, uh, the bordering part of Cameroon to Nigeria. Uh, most of them have now repatriated. The last batch we repatriated was actually this year in February. We do have about uh, 2,000 refugees who come from different uh, places, including the Congos, Rwanda, Burundi, uh, Mali, and so on, who are mostly settled in and around Lagos. And uh, a group of them are also settled in uh, Ijebu Ode in Ogun State. So we, we do uh, take care of them according to our mandate and uh, uh, providing uh, protection, uh, ensuring that they find lasting solutions, including voluntary repatriation when okay. it becomes feasible. Uh, local integration, I must say that uh, Nigeria has um, really been very generous in terms of locally integrating the Sierra Leonean and Liberian refugees we have managed to integrate about 5,000 of them in Nigeria in, uh, in the past. All and right, so, um, uh, yes, we, we take care of uh, refugees, but not so much those who are uh, victims of uh, the Northeast. Uh, what I am also aware in Cameroon is that there are Nigerian, Nigerian refugees. We have about uh, close to 200,000 Nigerian refugees who have fled 
due to the, the situation in the Northeast and who have sought asylum in uh, Cameroon, notably in uh, Chad also and in uh, Niger. All and right, we, those we, uh, Nigerians are being taken care of right. by uh, my um, colleagues who are uh, based in uh, those respective countries. And we are very much in contact, especially discussing the possibility of those Nigerians to begin returning when the situation is conducive. All right, then, uh, Angela de Congo, Atangana, UNHCR rep to Nigeria and ECOWAS, thank you for talking to us today, and we wish you all the best.